So before we get started, um, Sil Mac already um, make an introduction about the overview. So we have a four pack scheduled this afternoon. Um, we have, um, so after the UBB, we have a system view, and then we have a subsection about the liquid cool um, credit for the, um, for the OEM, OAI, and uh, we have the security management talk um, later um, by Mac, and then we have a panel discussion. So just let you know the schedule for this afternoon. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so, yeah, uh, we will share the Universal base board uh, for the accelerator modules. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay so that is the uh, agenda for <coughs> the universal base board. So we have a rough view why the OI uh, is necessary and uh, why the UB universal base board is. Uh, uh, is necessary, and we share the, the rough, uh, the current UBB spec overview, and uh, the, the mechanical side, and also the most important part for the uh, interconnected topologies, and uh, uh, some of the ele electrical design uh, specific, specific in details. Okay. Okay. So actually, the, the overview <coughs> segment already uh, shared the high level overview. So basically has uh, several parts, the, the module, uh, the universal baseboard, and the HIB interface, yeah. and the PDB, the chassis, and the expansion tree, and the chassis side. So for this session, we are focused on the universal baseboard. Okay. Yeah, so uh, universal base, yeah, we, we have contributed the OEM uh, specification, right? So then the next step is uh, the most important part is the universal baseboard that can host a lot of OEM modules that can help to build the systems. And uh, the universal baseboard basically provides a common interface between the actual modules and a different kind of topologies to compose them together. And uh, also, we need to make sure uh, the universal board is uh, interchangeable for different OEM, sys OEM modules and also for different, uh, different reference systems. That is the biggest challenge for the universal baseboard. So basically, we, uh, this uh, part we currently defining the universal baseboard. So the dimension of this baseboard there can support eight OM modules. Uh, this is a, it's a reasonable density. We think that can um, help the systems. And then the interconnected topologies. So how the, the OM modules can be organized to make sure the communication between them they can meet diversified workload requirements. And also the interface, uh, uh, the host interface, um, between the OM modules and the CPU side. And, and more, another way is that we need to uh, reserve some retirements to make sure the universal baseboard is also compatible with future generations. For example, PCI Gen4, Gen5, and some other interface like CXL, and also maybe um, some other, even like open copyright. So, so we need to make sure <coughs> the universal baseboard can be compatible with different uh, future technologies. And then the scale out uh, interface also with retirements. Yeah. Um, because uh, the, uni the university board board can just, just support eight OM modules, right? But for the distributed training scenarios, eight accelerators is not enough. So with really distributed trainees. So we also need to make good use of the high speed interconnection that in that is the OM modules itself in support. Basically, this, is, this kind of high-speed interface can support higher bandwidth and lower latencies. So we need to make sure our universal baseboard can also support that kind of uh, scale-out capabilities. Yeah, but the challenge is that <coughs> different OM modules actually uh, support have, has different uh, high-speed studies. So also low-level protocols is, is, is different. So when you find a universal way that can be compatible with different modules, so, so that the universal builds can support their scaled capabilities. So currently we're still working on that, but it's very a good challenge. So that's, I think that's, this is also a very good chance that we call our industrial partners to work with us to make this a reality. <coughs> and uh, this, this, the next one is, uh, is the power. Okay, so previously the most accelerators modules are uh, 12 watt powered. 
So basically, this can only support uh, generally 300 watt power consumption. So if you want to support even higher, okay, higher high power consumption oil modules, terawatt is doesn't work. Yeah. So basically, the, the the current will be when the when the workload fluctuates, the current will be very big. So that is a very difficult challenge for the the, the power designs. So in this way, we need to migrate to high power, for example, 50, 55, 54 watt powers. Yeah, but you also need to consider how the system can be compatible with different um, uh, options. So the universal, the, new, the universal baseboard also need to consider that so we can support both options. Yeah. And then the rack architecture, right? There are nine inch rack and also 21 inch rack. So how the universal baseboard can be fit in different rack solutions, we also need to consider that. And some other maintain and debug interface. So basically, the, for the universal baseboard, we need to make sure it can support the most, uh, um, yeah, the most popular uh, modules in the market. And we also need to consider in the future technology to make sure yeah, their scale out capabilities can be maintained. OK, so this is uh, the current universal baseboard. <clears throat> As we mentioned, uh, uh, this universal baseboard can be uh, uh, fit in 21 inch and also 19 inch rack. So the wise, yeah, th this wise is generally the or, or already reached the limit for 19 rack, 19 inch rack limit. And we also and for the for this for the length of the UBB, this number we have considered this discussed this this length with the community partners a lot. So basically, it can meet uh, most of the of the popular rack. For example, open open rack and some other uh, lighting. For example, the uh, OC op Microsoft open Microsoft open cloud rack, right? And also something for example, link in the traditional lighting inch rack and also for example, battle rack. So that can hit, it can be fit in most rack solutions. And for the this is a host. In, this is a um, expansion interface. This is a QSBD. This is a five retimers. So currently, actually, the, the universal, universal baseboard reserves the space for the five retimers. But for our for our current demo system, actually, this retimer is, is not there yet. So it only support few uh, limited uh, accelerator modules, and also the the cable from this QSBD can be uh, roughly one meter. So that limits the scale out capabilities. So we still need to work on the fire retirements to find a generic solution that can be applicable for most uh, OM modules. And uh, the, here we have the host interface. So we basically we design the, uh, the PCIe uh, interface and the power and uh, yeah, basically, the, the high speed singles include the PCIe interface. And also, it can be supported some other, for example, even OpenCAP or CXC or these future technologies. So, we need to make sure the retirement space is, is there. Yeah. OK. And on this uh, baseboard, there are different topologies. We can cover that later. OK. This is the current uh, uh, spec overview. So, uh, as we mentioned, the dimension, yeah. And the OM modules can support eight modules. And uh, for the power, typically, um, the 12 watt power can support 300 GDP. And uh, for uh, 55 or 48 watt, it can support uh, uh, 500 GDP. So this, uh, for the OM module itself, the specification can support 700 at the most. But for the current UBB, um, because we, we design uh, to support both the 12 watt and the 54 watt at the same time. So the, the universal baseboard can be reused. So we need to balance. So basically, we think uh, for terawatt OM modules, uh, 300 watt is OK. Yeah, but for 55, the 54 or 48 watt is, is a major direction for all, most OM modules in the future. So we support bigger, higher, uh, higher power consumptions. And uh, for the host interface, we can support 8 by 16 30s. So each OM modules can have a dedicated uh, interface between uh, to, to the host side. 
and we reserve the retirements. The, the third is, yeah, the third is currently we can support 28 uh, uh, GPBS NR0 or 56 uh, uh, PAM4 30s. So um, in, in, the, in the near several years, several years, we see most uh, AX modules are trying to, I mean, increase the uh, interclocking speed to make sure the computer key bandwidth can be bigger. Yeah, so basically it can cover us, yeah. And uh, yeah, topology, yeah, we have a um, uh, different topologies. So basically we have a fully uh, collected and uh, high cube mesh, and later we are weighted cover, we will cover that. And the collectors to the HIB interface, HIB, yeah. So maybe this is the power and the, some um, high speed interface. Also the scale out, uh, we, we use the, uh, general the, the most, pro, most popular the QLCB DD interface to, for the scale out capabilities and some other uh, MISC interface. Yeah. Okay, the, this is a, uh, a mechanical view of how about the, the UBB systems. So uh, on the upside is the UBB and uh, on the levels there is a MELA and the booster that can be um, con con connect the UBB to the basic chassis, yeah. Okay, and uh, for the interconnect topology and the later parts, yeah, we will we'll cover that. Thank you, Richard. Okay. Um, our, our staff from the topology here, um, there are different topology um, available that we can use and then um, as a common form factor and no different supplier, they come out different number of ports and uh, uh, speed. So this is actually one of the challenge when we design this uh, universal baseball. And so for example, um, we have a 2D torrents, right? And um, in the middle, we, for example, if uh, OEM that come out with a six port, and uh, this six port, it will not be able to do the fully connect. We can either do hybrid Q mesh or something like this, we call almost fully connect. And um, in the third one, we call fully connect. Basically, you need to have a seven port at least to, um, to have the um, fully connect. And then in the, in the very right side, uh, when you have an eight port, for example, and then you may come out such topology that you can um, expand. Um, we can cover this since we have one of the UBB reference board. We actually use the, um, we call like eight port hybrid, hybrid cube mesh. Um, and then um, in this group, we actually um, trying to create reference board, so we picked two topology and then create two UBB SKUs as a reference board, um, try to cover um, the OEM um, we are currently working with. Um, yesterday we, we shared that currently we have a four different OEM from four different uh, supplier. And then um, based on how many number of ports and uh, links they provide, and then we come out these two and, and then we can cover them all um, by using these two reference uh, UVB board. So the first one we call combined fully connect um, together with uh, uh, six port HCM. Um, so basically combined FC, so basically covers like fully connect. For example, if you have a seven port, this UVB can cover that. Um, we do fully connect. Or you have a six port and then we need to do the hybrid Q mesh and then this is embedded into this UVB so we can cover both of them. Um, so how fully connect, I think, is easy um, for us to, to understand. Just seven port connect to the seven OAM. And then the hybrid queue mesh, um, we have a, so basically you have a, a connection. So this, these are the fully um, physical connection our UBB board. And then um, I'm not sure if the color is actually, so you see the gray lines, right? And, these are the lines that we may not use. So this is a um, uh, co-design work together with a uh, OEM supplier. Um, some of the port they need to map to the UBB. So the grid line means uh, we don't have a connection for those um, OEM. They don't have a seven port or they come out with a um, six port with a hybrid Q mesh. And then the blue line is the one that take effect. And then actually if you do some 
rotation, it is a hybrid cool mesh. So this is how we combined these two topology together. Um, so this is our first UVB SKU reference design. Um, we have the topology like this, so we can cover different topology here. The second UVB SKU, um, like I mentioned, um, we call like eight pore hybrid cube mesh. Um, so basically, each of the OM we have eight pore, and then they combined um, with uh, like two link together um, to come out our topology like this. And then um, I think um, one of the good things is that um, for the two pore coming out, we are using um, we are using cable to connect them um, by utilize the um, the QS have PDD connector. So this is a way for scale out. Um, earlier, during the overview, we have, um, um, we, ha we have mentioned that we need to con consider scale out. So for scale out, there are different ways. You, you already know like by using NVIDIA, the current, the current for example, Volta right, or DGX1, DGX2 to scale out. Um, we have a way to either use um, Infinity Band or Ethernet um, by using the additional adding card to do the scale out. Um, the other thing is that if we can do uh, direct peer-to-peer -peer talk um, by using the cable to have the OEM talk to the OEM in the other system like directly. So this we call peer-to-peer um, -peer scale out. Um, it really depends on whether your protocol support that uh, or not. Um, so when we do the system design, we need to con consider both since now we can use the uh, different OEM, and then um, when you consider the system design, you need to also consider whether my system can accommodate um, different way to scale out. So this is the second um, UBB board interconnect topology. Um, and then I'm going to very technical, like electrical, uh, spec for the UBB design. Um, so this is a really uh, intense. Um, um, we mentioned that uh, from the host side, from the host side, we have a um, interface coming from host to this um, reference system design, and then um, we go through the host interface board and then get into the UBB. So UBB is the common part. Um, each of the each of the OM may use right, and um, so we need to define a, a common interface for us to deal with different OM. And then we really had a lot of meetings to come out the list of what kind of signal we may need. I, I will quickly go through what we cover. Uh, so firstly, the host bus uh, we reserved like eight OM, and then we reserved eight by sixteen um, differential pairs, and then to cover. And then uh, we also have the service link, and then this is currently like um, reserved for some other use case. Uh, one of the typical use cases is if you're if you're using NVIDIA, um, we may need to reserve some of the MV links. So this is a reserve from not all the OM. We may need these signals, but kind of just for future use. And then they they clock. Um, so we have a differential clock uh, to cover PCIe uh, clock from host, and then the aux. So when I say PCIe, since uh, the first generation, I think current um, the current um, whatever UBB available in the market, um, and then currently we're working with them is uh, based on PCIe. But this is not necessary to be PCIe. Uh, actually, I just had a conversation with IBM that uh, um, if the host um, it's an um, open copy based host. Uh, this clock can be 156 megahertz um, coming from the host just by using the same interface. And uh, um, the, aux, the aux clock is also our, uh, some clock from, I mean, generate from the host interface board to the UBB to provide for the service um, can be different um, frequency as well. And then the JTAC interface. Um, in the OAM spec, we defined the JTAC interface. We have a two JTAC. Uh, um, one is a low voltage, like um, um, 1.8 volt. The other is a 3.3. Um, the, the low voltage one is the is the must to have, and the other one is the um, optional, depending on whether you have a JTAC master in your OAM design. Um, I'll cover like how we use a JTAC interface in a bit. 
and then I2C I2C bus. Um, we have a many different use case um, for I2C, so we defined five pairs, five I2C bus um, in this case. Um, I also cover how these five I2C uh, mapped to our UBB board. EPROM. Um, EPROM here, um, we actually um, reserve this uh, for a flu. Um, so this is, this is really for the OM to read the information or to tell the host like what kind of topology and then baseball information of this baseball. For example, I have a two baseball, right? And then they are interchangeable. And then from a system point of view, how my host know oh, what kind of um, UBB I'm currently using. So this is uh, some baseball information we can save into the flu and the OM can read it and then go through inbound to get to let the host know um, what baseball I'm using. And uh, so power break, power break is kind of easier to understand, um, just a protection for the board. Um, uh, I think the current GPU or PCIe based bus that we, we have this defined, I still remember the pin is B12 uh, for the standard PCIe. Um, UR is also one of the interface we, we defined for the debug. And power and some of the GPU reserved for different use cases as well. Um, power connector, uh, Richard just mentioned that uh, for the current UBB setup, um, for 12 volt we support up to 300 watt and then 54 we support up to 500 watt. Um, so um, for, for us, it just select the power connector which can support enough power um, for my UBB use case and then how the power map to the UBB for different devices. I have a, a diagram to show in a bit. Okay, JTAG. Um, I mentioned earlier, our current UBB, our current OEM spec, we define two JTAG interface and then um, some of the OEM may only have the low voltage one. So we have a two um, JTAG interface in the UBB board, but think about, I have um, eight OEM, right? So total, I have uh, many different JTAG interface and how I can use them. So um, the way how we do it, we have a CPLD, which is powered by the low voltage, and then we connect, I mean, low voltage for the VREF. VREF means uh, the normally is the IO power um, from the OM. And then we also have a normal power, like 3.3. And then we have the CPLD like uh, powered by different voltage and then to handle them. And then we have a JTAC max um, to connect to the um, system management side. Um, the, so on the right side, so these are on the UBB side. And on BMC is actually in a different board. Um, our current reference board, we, we, we have the management um, on the host interface board. Um, so we have a BMC. BMC has the JTAC interface. And then, um, so think about BMC, JTAC interface need to handle different functions. For example, I need to upgrade. Um, my CPLD. Um, in our reference design, we actually have a two CPLD um, defined, one in charge of like a power sequence and normal use, and the other CPLD just handle the, the low voltage or JTAG, some other, um, some other bus. So BMC has a JTAG interface, need to have a max to max either the, the main CPLD, which means to control the, uh, the power sequence to update through the uh, through the JTAG. And then we max into the other route, which means we, we also need to upgrade firmware. So we have a dedicated JTAG, JTAG interface into this uh, secondary CPLD to upgrade the firmware. And then, and then the rest of it is BMC to use a JTAG interface to assess my OEM. So that's the debug pass. Um, so that's basically the logic, um, how we use the max to have the BMC get into this uh, um, CPLD. Um, and then have the JTAG connect to different OM by using the MUX. You are. Um, they are, um, we, we, we defined I2C, we defined JTAG, we defined you are different debug interface to, uh, for the debug, for the management. You are is one of the interface, some of the OM vendor, they use you are for debug. Um, so, um, 
So for sure, we will have a BMC, and then we have a switch to connect to different OEM through the uh, UR interface. So BMC could through, go through UR to get the information from the OEM. And on the other side, we also reserved the micro USB interface here um, to um, when you have a physical um, connection, right? And then you can have a USB cable to connect to the reference system. And they have an interface all the way connect to my OEM. So you, um, you can either go through BMC to do remote debug, or you can go through the physical interface to do the uh, debug. Um, I square C. Um, I mentioned earlier that we defined five I square C bus. Um, to to connect through the host interface board to connect to my uh, UBB. So you see here we have um, um, one one of them is we have the I2C bus to take care of the uh, hustle controller. So I go through why yeah we we have a different hustle controller to connect here. I I have a um, um, power block diagram I'll show you later on. So all the um, we need to have an interface to, to check the hustle controller in, in information. And then my OM itself, right? I have a I square C bus, so that's the secondary. And then um, we put a PCA, yeah, 955 here, uh, is to connect to um, the, the OMs. And then um, PCI retimer, and then also um, the retimer. Phi, Phi retimer, we also have a different I square C bus to connect them. So my BMC be able to read the information. Um, and then, um, of course, all the sensors go through the I square C to read. OK. Uh, so that's the power diagram, a lot of information here. So basically, um, we assume from the bus bar or power supply, we have the power coming in uh, through, um, I mean, we have the power coming in 54 volt or 48 volt. Um, and then when we come in, since of the, the power is up to 500, um, we trying to protect the board. So we have a different household controller to separate all the power delivery paths all the way to the OM. And then um, remember, we also need to cover 12 volt. So this is how we achieve that by using the trouble VR. And then this is a power converter we put into the host interface board or the power dis distribution board um, combined together. Um, so 54 volt all the way to supply to the power or the trouble all the way to support the power, um, depending on what voltage of OM you are using. And uh, um, we, we put a some, yeah, a lot of like protection, like if use here. Um, even before the hustle controller, right, we need to consider how to protect the board. Um, I, yeah, we also have a discussion like um, even before the hustle controller, actually there are small amount of PCB area that is not protected. Um, so we, we need to come out, either go through the layout or we can do um, the inline fuse or whatever to protect some of the area that is not protected through different way. And then after hustle controller, the ball is protected by the hustle controller or by the e-fuse. Um, a little bit information about the signal integrity. Um, I have this um, diagram showing our OM, um, OM spec. So um, it clearly tell you what kind of budget you have for each of the area, right? Um, module itself, we defined up to 28 gigabit per second, and then you have 8 dB. So this is a guidance for the OM supplier when they define or design the OM. So they, how much budget they have. And then um, depending on end to end, how much budget I have. So the rest of them is for the baseball. So I have a rough um, breakdown here. So OM module, we defined like a, this example, like by using the 28 gigabit per second, since this is the current speed we can support. And then when we move to higher speed, we need to revisit um, the planning here. Um, 
And then in this case, uh, we see the PCB trace lens on the baseboard. We have a 13 inch. This is a guidance for you to choose what kind of PCB material you want to use, depending on, uh, for example, which interconnect topology you're choosing, right? What's the longest trace lens you have on the B uh, UBB board? And then you're going to select the um, PCB material here. Um, some of the information here by using, for example, the ultra low loss, hyper ultra low loss, or low loss, how, how, how much you can run based on um, the um, based on the PCB material loss information, um, then just a guidance for you. Um, for the reference UBB board, we're using ultra low loss. So um, since um, our trace lens is about like 14, 15 inch longest, so we're using this. And then the, the PCB layer is 22 layer for the reference board. It doesn't mean that uh, all the UBB board. By the way, the UBB, we are, mention a lot of UBB here doesn't mean we only have one skill, right? You can generate your own UBB as long as you um, are matching our spec. Um, we're going to contribute the spec and then as long as you're matching our spec, you, a spec, you can create your own UBB and it's, it will be interchangeable to our reference system or whatever the system other people use. Um, this is just a reference number for the current reference board. Um, given the particular um, interconnect topology and the material you're using. This is 22 layer and then the, the PCB thickness and uh, uh, the material and then stack up. Okay. Um, showing the call to action, um, call to action here. So um, just welcome everybody to join this group and then um, to contribute together um, to uh, try to set up the infrastructure like we mentioned. Thank you.